Hello chess friends, so in today's game of the day, we're going to have a look at an excellent chess game played by Anatoly Karpov. In fact, this is not just an excellent game, but rather I would call it a brilliancy. This was uh, played in 1974 in the Nice Olympiad. And this was just right before the 1975 World Championship, which of course never really happened. Fischer forfeited and abandoned the chess world, left us uh, orphaned. But uh, of course, Karpov was making his mark. He was a very young player. And this was a great example of Karpov's uh, playing style. This was a perfect squeeze. So, and, and when I was uh, studying this game as a child, it really had a very, very deep impact. Specifically, the next move really, uh, really taught me a lot. And uh, I was able to use a very similar idea in many of my future games. So, it is white to play. White was Anatoly Karpov playing against Wolfgang Anziker in 1974. What would you play here as white? Remember, there is no something called uh, like a spectacular combination here. It's all about maneuvering. It's all about um, squeezing the opponent. So there is one move that Kapo played, which just stick into my mind. And this is a classic game, a classic move. So white to play. What would you play here? All right. So this is really a special move. In this position, Karpov came up with an excellent plan. He thought, what will happen if I would double my rooks on the A file? That would be really tremendous. And he starts it. Obviously, it's not possible right now. If you uh, try to do that, he can simply exchange one of the rooks. And the other rook, remaining rook will not have that much of power. But here is what he does. He plays bishop to A7. This is a simply amazing move. In fact, this is the starting point of some something absolutely genius so what does this move do well it blocks the rook on a8 it has no squares at all the rook on a8 has no squares and it's a very bad piece and you can see all of these pieces are totally cramped on the queen side all of the black pieces are totally cramped and now the plan for white is very simple he would like to move his bishop to c2 and get his other rook to the a1 square and double his rook double his firepower and basically he's trying to uh I'll tell you what he does. So this was the move that he plays. Rook bishop to a7. Really brilliant. Now, although black doesn't have uh, much to do, he can still play waiting moves like knight to e8, which he did. There's no particularly uh, great point about this, in fact. So as white planned, he plays bishop to c2, trying to get the first rank open for the rook to shuffle around. So knight to c7. Again, as I said, there is no great plan behind this. Uh, black pieces are just stepping on each other's toe and he can't really do much apart from uh, moves like this. In fact, this is closing the diagonal, protecting, giving some extra, extra protection to the rook on a8. But apart from that, it does nothing significant. All right. Rook a to e1. As planned, white has totally gathered all of his troops on the queen side. He's building up. Whereas black, who is totally tied up, can't really do here much. Queen to e7 played. So you can see black in the last few moves got his knight to c7, protected the rook and once that is done, he moved his queen safely. And now he's again waiting. He doesn't have really much to do. Bishop to b1. Bishop to b1 played by Anatoly Karpov. Bishop to e8 played by Wolfgang Anziker. So here comes the maneuvering idea now. Knight to e2. You might ask where is this knight heading for? Well, it might, uh, it might in some cases go. It might prepare to play the move f to f4 after moving the knight on f3. We might play knight h2 and then move f to f4. That might be the primary idea. There might be another idea, uh, something like getting the knight to a3. In fact, there is a story behind it, which I'll tell you after the game. There is a very similar game that happened, which was very similar to this game. So, uh, knight e2. The main idea is knight h2 followed by f2 f4 expanding on the queen king side as well. So this is very typical of Karpov and players like Petrosian. You know, they build up on one of the sides. And as you can see, most of the black pieces on this side are so cramped, they can't really help out the black king. In fact, the black king is totally vulnerable over here on the king side and might as well be a subject to the attack. All right, let's move forward. Knight to d8 played. Again, black is trying to desperately get some counterplay, uh, desperately trying to shuffle around to the king side now. Knight to h2. As planned, we put our knight on e2, move away this knight, and now the idea is to 
open up the position with f2 f4 you can see uh, the player who is attacking always have the upper side because he can always freely move his pieces whereas the player who is passively defending doesn't have the freedom black cannot move his rook on a8 he can't really move his rook on c8 his knights are stepping on each other's toe whereas white can freely move his pieces anywhere around because he's the one who is attacking so attacking players always have a slight edge all right bishop to g7 the bishop just shuffled around again black doesn't have a great amount of plan here as planned white again goes with a very clear cut idea of playing f2 f4 and opening up the position in fact if the position opens up this is going to be great for uh white because white pieces can easily swing on to the other side as well whereas black pieces are totally crammed and this will be uh disastrous for black so he cannot really open up the position in fact he plays f6 now white in his attempt to open up the position plays f5 pawn to f5 he would very much like to sacrifice and open up lines for some kind of an attack wolfgang declines he keeps the position close you can see if so many of your attacking so many of your opponent's pieces are close to you your king you would really like to keep it safe by keeping it close and that's what uh Karpov's opponent is doing here he's keeping the position as close as possible and to some extent he has succeeded in that but of course there are problems with this move because of the last move pawn to g5 the bishop on g7 is an extremely extremely bad piece in fact that's a very bad bishop that's just a tall pawn and this bishop on e8 is slightly uh slightly a good bishop and the strategy now for white is to exchange that bishop with our bishop which is not doing much on b1 all right so as per the plan bishop to c2 trying to exchange the bishop bishop to f7 knight to g3 moving the knight out of the way also controlling the h5 square knight to b7 bishop to d1 so you can see the bishop is uh, the bishop was on b1 it goes to the c2 square and now it's traveling to the h5 square with the idea of exchanging when this bishop will exchange you can see white's bishop is not really great he is not performing any great task but if you take out black's bishop from the position suddenly all of the squares become extremely extremely weak and that is why that light square bishop is very important for black as a defensive piece h6 played by black bishop to h5 would you like to exchange in fact exchanging would be tremendously a bad idea after that the white knight will come to the h5 square that is an absolute beast of a piece he's a very strong piece and uh, white can easily build up the pressure after this so of course after bishop h5 he did not go for the exchange but rather hold on held on with queen to e8 so he is asking white to capture you know you don't really want to trade pieces masters don't really trade pieces so easily until they find a way uh, in which they are getting some sort of an advantage queen to d1 karpov is neither going to back down he's not going to trade pieces himself he would very much like to come forward so knight to d8 played rook to a3 slightly improving the white pieces king to f8 rook 1 to a2 king to g8 so you can see in the last two moves white has improved his rooks they have slightly advanced they are protecting some important squares they can also shift around to the king side this is protecting over here they are perfectly fine whereas black has done nothing more than just putting his king on f8 and then back on g8 this clearly shows that black has no plans nothing at all it's all under white's control knight to g4 played in fact this is a great tactical idea you might think well the bishop on h5 looks like a free piece can this be captured it can be but then white plays knight takes h5 queen takes h5 it can be played but then you will have to lose your queen after knight takes f6 that's a double attack also a discovered attack over here on the queen so if you take this knight i'm gonna capture your queen there you have it and that will be totally winning for white in fact white is just gonna crush your uh black king side is a toast so although the bishop is free it is supported by tactics it cannot be captured so here he plays king to f8 now we play knight to e3 so you can see karpov this is called as petite combinations uh, as capablanca called it little tactics that uh, a player uses in order to improve his position let's go two moves behind the knight on h2 was not particularly great he was not doing something uh something of a great he was not contributing in a way but after this moves he has improved he has came to a very active square where he's looking forward to multiple squares and that's the way kapov plays that's the way 
many players like uh, Karpov or Petrushin or Nimzovic plays, you know, they like to improve their pieces using tactics. King to g8, no plans at all. Bishop of Sun, this is the point to declare our intentions. Now we are going to invade on the light squares. As you can see, as I said, if the bishop goes away, the light square becomes vulnerable. And after takes, queen h5, queen invades the squares. The idea is very simple. Queen g6 followed by knight h5 is totally game over. There will be a mate on the g7 square as well as knight into f6 and threats like that. So, knight to d8, trying to exchange queens. Cabo is okay with the exchange of queens, but it has to be to his benefit. So, he puts the queen on g6 and asks black, you want to capture the queen? In fact, black would not like to capture the queen. After captures, captures, you can see this is a heavenly position for white. This knight is going to go here. This knight is going to go here. And it is an absolutely crushing position. Black pieces have no activity, whereas the knight will be going on f5, uh, h5. They'll attack the bishop. They'll attack the e7 square. They'll attack this d6 square. Everything will be under attack. Nothing cannot, uh, nothing can be saved over here. All of the squares, f6, h6, g7, e7, d6 will be under attack after the knights reach f5 and h5. That's the reason black can't even think of exchanging the queens. So after queen f6, uh, queen g6, king f8 was played. White, of course, goes forward with his plan of invading with knight to h5. And this is the point where uh, Karpov's opponent thought, enough is enough. I'm going to resign here. This is totally lost. In fact, there is a checkmate threat of um, queen takes bishop. That's a mate threat. There is also threats of knight takes. There are, there are multiple threats. And if you take the queen, for example, queen takes g6, simply pawn takes. And as we have already planned, this knight, for example, let's say you go king over here. What else can you do? Knight f5. There's an attack here. There's an attack here. Double attack on g7. There's an attack on d6. You can't really protect more of the most of the squares. And that's why black is total toast over here. And that's the reason after the move, knight to h5, it was in this position that Anatoly Karpov's opponent decided to resign the game. And this was the star move of the game. Bishop to a7, after which all of this plan was conceded and uh, Karpov totally crushed his opponent, totally squeezed his opponent. And I still remember uh, the feeling I got from this, this move. It was a simple move and I ne never really thought that such uh, a move can be played in chess. I was really young at this point and I, I was really impressed by this move. And I've later implemented uh, such ideas of blocking the opponent's pieces and building up on one side and then attacking on the other side. So, what a great game by Anatoly Karpov, the 12th world champion. Hope you love this game. I have absolute, uh, this is one of my absolute favorite games. It's a brilliancy. So, until next time, see you guys. Bye.